Atlas battery heater power. At T minus 1 minute 55 seconds, the team will command the launch sequencer to start. At T minus 1 minute 50 seconds, the team will secure Centaur LH2 and LO2 topping. At T minus 1 minute 40 seconds, the team will command the flight control system to launch enable. At T minus 1 minute 38 seconds, the team will secure Centaur battery heater power. At T minus 1 minute 37 seconds, the team will arm the flight termination system. At T minus 40 seconds, the Centaur tanks will be stable at flight pressures. A final propellant status check is conducted at T minus 25 seconds. At T minus 3 seconds, the booster engine starts. Vehicle motion occurs at T plus 1.1 seconds. 25 seconds away from picking up the count. On my mark, time will be T minus four minutes and counting. Three, two, one, mark. T minus four minutes and counting. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus three minutes, 53 seconds, and counting. The countdown clock has resumed. T zero. Again, plan for 2.10 p.m. Eastern Time. The launch vehicle, spacecraft, ground systems, the range, and weather are all go. Do not have any issues in work. Once the launch vehicle lifts off, it will take approximately 81 seconds to reach Mach 1, or the speed of sound. Three fifteen. Alice tanks flight pressure. Minus three. Securing LO two topping. Minus two fifty. Two. Vehicle internal. Launch sequence and start. D minus one minute. LH2. One minute Securing forty five seconds. LH2. The vehicle is at flight pressures. Centaur tanks are being secured and the Centaur and Booster are on their own internal battery power. One minute, 25, 28 seconds. Minus 120. Fork is armed. FTS count started. Minus 110. Vent valve's locked. Came out of 60 seconds. Table at step three.
status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Sippers. Minus 20. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Atlas engine ignition, zero, and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the first space based infrared systems mission for the United States Air Force. And you're hearing the voice of Marty Malinowski providing launch vehicle ascent data. Let's listen in for the mission's progress. Picture your bow roll program has begun. Body rates look good. Is throttle back right on time. Engine response looks good. Current altitude is 9.2 miles, downrange distance 4.8 miles. Current velocity is 18 th 1,897 miles per hour. Range track shows the vehicle making good progress right down the middle of the range. event will be closed loop stern enable. Bus and battery voltages look good, tank pressures are stable. And Q Alpha Limited Stern has been enabled. Vehicle body rates look very good. And we've fired the RCS pyro valve. That system's now pressurizing up the flight levels. The signatures look good. RD-180 continues to perform well. Next event will be the roll for our solar uh, pointing requirements, and the booster has begun that roll. Body rates look good, and that roll is complete. And boosters throttle back again, right on schedule. Engine response looks good. Very minimal PU commands. Coming up on our 5G throttle segment. Currently accelerating at 4.5 Gs. And we've begun boost phase cooldown. The Pogo Pyro event has been fired. Now accelerating at 5 Gs. And beginning to throttle back to 4.6 for Biko. Boost phase cooldown is complete. And we have Biko. Engine shutdown looks good. We have retro rockets and stage separation. We have locks and fuel pre-start. RCS GN2 purge firing is underway. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. 
Looking for payload train jettison momentarily. And we have jettison indication. Centaur steering, closed loop steering has been enabled. Body rates look good. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus four minutes, 45 seconds into the Sibbers GO1 mission. The Atlas vehicle is performing as expected. Currently, the vehicle is at an altitude of 91 uh, nautical miles. It's 345 miles downrange from Cape Canaveral, traveling at a velocity of 11,085 miles an hour. The vehicle is performing as expected. So you just heard Marty Malinowski report the successful execution of the events comprising the early part of today's mission. All systems, again, are continuing to operate as expected. We had uh, main engine cutoff, stage separation, and Centaur main engine start number one, and payload fearing jettison events occurring as expected. Uh, this is an 11-minute, 13-second long uh, first burn of the Centaur upper stage. And I'm joined now by United States Air Force Lieutenant Natasha Del Rosario with the Air Force Infrared Space Systems Directorate. So, Lieutenant Del Rosario, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Don. It's a pleasure and honor to be here for the historical launch of GO-1. Well, we've just seen a spectacular liftoff of the Sibbers GO-1 mission. Uh, could you briefly explain a little bit of the Sibbers mission? and uh, how it fits into the overall Air Force space portfolio. Well, the space-based infrared system is led by Brigadier General Roger Teague, and the Infrared Space System Directorate is located at the Los Angeles Air Force Station Space and Missile System Center. The Sibbers mission is to define and develop, field and sustain, space-based infrared surveillance tracking and targeting capabilities for the nation. Sibbers with its highly sophisticated scanning and staring sensors, will accomplish four mission areas. It will enhance early warning of ballistic missile launches around the globe, support the nation's ballistic missile defense systems, greatly expand our technical intelligence gathering capability, and provide enhanced situational awareness for warfighters on the battlefield. Well, Sibbers GO-1 is the first in the constellation. Could you explain the unique features and capabilities of this satellite? Well, as the name implies, Sibbers GO-1 will be inserted into geosynchronous orbit. Sibbers GO-1 carries a scanning sensor, similar to but more agile than the already deployed Sibbers HEO sensor, and it also has a staring sensor. The scanning sensor will generally provide global surveillance with the staring sensor intended to interrogate areas of interest around the globe with even more enhanced sensitivity and revisit time. Support to the four mission areas, theater missile warning mission, missile defense mission, technical intelligence mission, and the evolving battle space awareness mission area was a driver for the design of the geo staring sensor. As a result, it will provide very fast repointing ability, high sensitivity, and a shorter revisit time for areas of interest and for tracking dim ballistic missiles to boost or burnout. The staring sensor will also provide a mode of operation that allows it to continuously stare at a site with a very high refresh weight as well as flexibility in spectral band selection. Enhanced sensitivity and revisit time from the Sibber sensors bring opportunity for earlier detection of missile launches, higher confidence detection of new dimmer and shorter duration events, and more accurate estimation of missile trajectory parameters. Well, Lieutenant Del Rosario, Sibbers also includes payloads in highly elliptical orbit. Could you explain these payloads and how they fit into the overall system? Don, the highly elliptical orbit satellites, or HEOs, are hosted in the Molniya orbit. These payloads view three spectral bands, shortwave, midwave, and sea to ground. They're located in the northern latitudes, and the vehicles provide strategic and theater surveillance. Well, Lieutenant Del Rosario, that's great information. Thank you very much. We now uh, can show you a video that has some additional information about the topics we've just discussed. Global persistent infrared surveillance continues to be a critical national security space mission. The Cold War focus